The grand old party is in deep trouble as yet another Chintin Shivir has been set up by the Congress, but there's been no change in party leadership. Miffed G23 leaders have called for reform as an uneasy calm seems to settle in the party after the Congress Working Committee meeting over the weekend. Is this the lull before another storm or is the sinking Congress ship just heading towards a massive iceberg, an iceberg of extinction? Another electoral loss, another brainstorming, another meeting ending on expected lines. On Sunday, the Congress Working Committee met for four hours to introspect on the defeat in five states. At the meeting, the Gandhis offered to step back, but loyalists ensured that status quo is maintained. The group of 23 Congress leaders who had earlier dissented have demanded immediate organizational elections, particularly to the post of party president. But the CWC on Sunday didn't seem to be in any hurry to carry out a party region. कांग्रेस कार्य समिति ने सर्वसम्मति से श्रीमती सोनिया गांधी जी के नेतृत्व में अपने विश्वास की पुनः पुष्टि की और कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष से अनुरोध किया कि वे आगे बढ़ पार्टी का नेतृत्व और मजबूती से करें एवं आवश्यक एवं व्यापक एवं आवश्यक तथा व्यापक संगठनात्मक बदलाव करें। At Sunday CWC, only three of the known dissenters were there: Gulam Nabi Azad, Anand Sharma, and Mukul Vasnik. The G23 reportedly wants accountability fixed for the poll debacle. It had conveyed that the party can't be run on proxy, and Congress has to have an alliance strategy to fight upcoming elections. At the meeting, loyalists insisted that Rahul Gandhi must return as party president. Several workers chanted pro-Rahul Gandhi slogans outside the AICC headquarters. The perception is that the rout in Punjab has been the most insulting defeat for the Congress in recent elections. And Sonia Gandhi has reportedly said that it was a mistake that she kept protecting Amrinder Singh indirectly admitting that he should have been removed earlier as the chief minister. And as the Congress nursed its wounds, the BJP took pot shots at it. The Congress has called for a Chintan Shivir after the budget session of Parliament and another CWC meet before it. And everyone will be waiting to see if the party then finally goes in for a leadership overhaul or not. Bureau Report, India Today. What's likely to happen next in the Congress? Will there be a shake-up at the leadership position? Uh, or will the party just very gently keep sinking to a point of complete oblivion? Joining us on the news track, I want to welcome first India's foremost political commentator, Rajateep Sardesai, with us also on this broadcast, representing the Congress, Supriya Srinath. Shahzad Punawala was earlier aligned with the Congress. He's now an official spokesperson of the BJP. Sanjay Jha has been in the Congress. Now he is on the outside, though he hasn't joined any political front. I want to go across to Rajdeep first. The Gandhi is offering to resign in the manner in which they did to any neutral observer would almost seem to be a bait for other members of the Congress Working Committee to chime that we can't be without you, you must continue to lead us, which is exactly how that script planned out. However, given the 4 nil debacle, uh, 4 towards, in fact 5 nil from the Congress, 4 for the BJP, will the Congress continue business as usual or do you see Rajdeep some real action coming out of this Chinti Shivir? Let me be very honest and let's call a spade a shovel today, uh, Rahul. The fact is the Congress party today needs surgery. It doesn't need band-aid and it needs surgery on the head, 
the heart and the feet. What do I mean? The feet, the organization, the heart, the ideology, the head, the leadership. All need to transform, reinvent or be changed. The organization needs a proper system where you go down right to the block level. Something very difficult for a party like the Congress, which traditionally has not been a carder based party. The heart needs ideological clarity. Where do you stand on some of the contentious issues of the day? You can't have differing signals all the time coming from different Congress leaders. And then you come to the head, which is the leadership question. Are we saying that the moment the Gandhis quit or are pushed out, the Congress would transform itself? Unfortunately, the truth, uh, Rahul, and the sad truth of the Congress today is that there aren't enough mass-based leaders who really can inspire confidence that they can revive the Congress. So therefore, the Congress is caught between a rock and a hard place. The Gandhis are the glue that put, builds the Congress together. But they're also the weakness because outside, for the outside world, the Gandhis represent the status quo. They represent the old world order. They represent all the baggage of the past. Therefore, they are the weakness of the Congress at the moment because they don't allow change as a result. But they're also, strangely enough, the strength of a party which otherwise perhaps would amoeba-like disintegrate in various directions. So therefore, the Congress's challenge, as I say, when you have a patient in ICU, you can't apply Band-Aid. And I think for much too long, and especially over the last seven years, since the rise of Mr. Modi, the Congress on the back foot has tried to apply Band-Aid in the hope that better things are around the corner. You can't. In today's world, politics has become very competitive. The BJP under Modi Shah have changed the rules, especially for electoral politics. And therefore, unless the Congress changes and changes dramatically and soon, it will become Unfortunately, because India needs a strong opposition and the Congress is the largest national brand, we need a strong opposition, but the Congress will become irrelevant in several states as we just saw in these elections. Supriya Shrinet, this is deeply disturbing. The fact that uh, this clamor which says you must go on, you must continue, it almost seems as if despite the drubbing, the Congress is in no mood to effect a leadership change in any other democracy of the world if a particular set of leaders leads the party to defeat after defeat, defeat after defeat in the way that the Gandhi family has, everyone else will effect a leadership change except that one very obvious fact seems to be oblivious uh, to this Congress Working Committee. You know, I want to say two things up front. And the first thing that I want to say is that nobody in the Congress, whether as a spokesperson, me or my leaders deny that the results were very disappointing and corrective measures need to be taken. That's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make, and I think some sections of the media thought that there will be a meeting and we'll come out with some grand announcements. We are a party that has been in existence for over 100 years. You think we can give these knee-jerk reactions? Obviously, there will be a process of conversation. Obviously, people will be taken on board. Obviously, there will be, uh, you know, uh, a Chintan Shiver that will be organized. You don't, you don't belong to the Congress party and just come in in a CWC and say, okay, these are the corrective measures. Here's what we are doing, tuck, 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 and this is done. That's not how we function. There is a reason why we are present in every state of this country. And you cannot leave people behind. You've got to take people along, those who agree with you and those who not. Do I get your point about corrective action and corrective action being meaningful? Absolutely. There cannot be any bandage. There needs to be an overhaul. If you read the statement that was issued, it was it very categorically stated organizational weaknesses. We are admitting that we failed to impress upon the people the very issues that we were trying to voice. But we are also very mindful of the fact that we are in existence for many years. There are people in every city of this country who are our supporters. We can't leave their aspirations behind. No, but you none of this answers the CWC fundamental question. And make a grand no, announcement. If you but see, Supriya. Let me finish. Supriya no, if you... I'm still talking, Rahul. Please okay. let me finish my point. Go on. Let me finish my point, please. Thank you. You know, while you may have expected that we'll come out at 9.30 and make a grand announcement, the worker in Maharaj Ganj or Gorakhpur does not. He still believes Rahul Gandhi is his leader. So how do I defy his aspiration and come out and do what the media or the larger public perception may be? I think we've got to take our workers on board and which is exactly what the sanctity no, of an ASCC session... but here is the problem, Supriya. You're saying is. Rahul Gandhi is the leader and I think this point was made in the CWC and was definitely made outside where Rahul Gandhi himself doesn't know whether he's the leader. It's as if he's sitting on the driver's seat. He says, no, but I'm actually not driving. The car is headed towards a tree. And he says, no, but I'm not driving. 
a lot of the leaders said if Rahul Gandhi is indeed the leader, let him say I am the leader and let him lead you for good or for bad. No matter what happens, win or lose, at least he is leading you. Here he is so, wanting to sit, wanting to lead, so, but not saying that he is the leader. And that's a that's a part of the problem that the Congress deals with. So Rahul, no, so Rahul, uh, I think it takes a lot of conviction of courage to lose an election after 2019 and come in and say that I take the moral loss on myself, the buck stops with me, and I am walking away from this. And I don't but think he hasn't I want walked to away. the Congress because he hasn't he lost walked the away. How many people if he'd have walked away, it would be different no, than didn't walk he away. Has. He's not no longer the leader. Every, uh, Rahul, I am not here to argue with you. I am here to answer your questions. If you allow me the space to do so, I think it will be nice. Thank you. I think Rahul Gandhi has said time and again in every CWC that I don't want to be the leader. Let there be an AICC election. And if the AICC election throws him up as a leader, then so be it. But he took the moral responsibility and walked away. How many people are willing to do that? How many people are willing to put power aside and function without it? I don't think there are too no, many this people is problem, outside or even within the Congress. It's like and I say in, this in with a, some amount of respect in a to everybody around. In a cricketing metaphor, Rahul Gandhi doesn't want to be captain. He won't let anybody else but become captain. Politics is not no, now, now I'm speaking and to Rajdeep. Congress is not Team India. If it were Team India, at least they'll win some matches. The problem is that they're losing match after match. They're not winning any. Right now they're batting like Zimbabwe and that's a problem. Rajdeep. He's not captain. He refuses to be captain. He doesn't let his mother won't Your let anybody else hold become hold cricket. Well, well, one second. His mother won't let anybody else become captain. And you've got a team which doesn't have a captain, and therefore they're pulling in all different directions. You know, the one line that I can give na banuga na banne dunga. That's been the state of the Congress over the last couple of years. You cannot fight the Modi juggernaut without with, with a leadership uh, a leaderless ship. And I think that's been part of the problem. As I said, it's not just leaders. It's organizational, it's ideological. And much of this has been building up over the last 20, 25 years. My belief now increasingly is 2004 to 14 was an aberration. The Congress has been hemorrhaging round, for example, in Uttar Pradesh, where Supriya comes from, from the late 1980s. And there have been committee after committee reports. There are panel reports appointed. But all those reports do not result in anything beyond uh, the usual sound and fury and scripts, you know, where that we are conscious of our organizational weaknesses. We realize that there is there are huge challenges, but you don't act on them. And when you don't act right down the line, the same people continue in office. The Congress almost seems defeat proof. You can't have defeat proof netas continuing election after election because then it means there's a lack of accountability. It fails to inspire the workers. And that, to my mind, is part of the problem the Congress faces. There are multiple problems. But one of the problems is definitely what you identified. Rahul Gandhi has to decide for himself. If you want to lead from the front, please go ahead and show that you can lead from the front. Then you will earn the respect of not just your supporters, but people who otherwise may want to vote for an alternative to the BJP today, but do not want to vote for the Congress because the Congress under, comes with a lot of baggage. Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, Vadra, like it or not, are fifth generation dinners. So anything that has happened in previous years, whether it's the emergency 62 war, will all be attached to them. The Congress needs to come to this debate in Indian politics, I believe, with a fresh outlook. Whether Rahul Gandhi himself can bring and recast the Congress in his own image, good luck to him. Then build the party with young leaders and show that you can do it. Indira Gandhi did it in 69 by virtually breaking the Congress. So either you break the Congress and forge your own path, but in the present system, it seems to me, as I said, na banunga, na banne dunga. Shazad Punawala, you've been part of the Congress uh, ecosystem on its fringes for a while. The point that Supriya Shrinet makes is you come with me to Gopal Ganj, Maharaj Ganj or Gorakhpur, you ask whatever little congressmen there are still left or those who vote for the Congress, who do you want? At least those who are congressmen would say they want Rahul Gandhi. For them, Rahul Gandhi is their leader and therefore, how can Sonia Gandhi suddenly appoint anybody else because the Chidambaram or a Kamal Nath or anybody else won't listen to say a young Sachin pilot and therefore even if you appoint someone like Sachin pilot, the working president, uh, the seniors won't listen to him and he'll be ineffectual. 
Uh, Rahul and Rajdeep, thank you for inviting me on your show. And I think this is a very important discussion we are having, not because it's an opportunity for me or my party to kick somebody when they are down, but more importantly, a democracy, uh, even though we are a government that is very responsible towards the people, requires a responsible opposition to keep the government in check. And therefore, I think the Congress's fortunes are very important to be discussed. And let me make a couple of points very humbly. Uh, and one should be humble in victory, and one should also be self-aware in defeat, which I think I think friends uh, who I had in my, con in, in my previous days in the Congress party lack a little bit of self-awareness and sometimes they suffer from what I call the ostrich mindset. They are unable to see what is actually transpiring within the party and outside the party within the country. Now, you know, uh, Rahul, uh, look, losing an election is not a problem in a democracy. My party, the BJP, has lost several elections. We were, in fact, uh, a party related to the opposition for a very long period of time. But what was defining feature of BJP was never Parajay but Parishram and performance. We have never allowed Parivar to dominate Parishram and performance. Unfortunately for the Congress party, their defining feature even in defeat is no longer Parishram. See, today Rahul Gandhi is uh, will leave the Congress party, the leaders, where are they? On the very next day after the election results that we won four states, you saw the Prime Minister in action, our other leaders are in action because we have the NM factor and that doesn't mean Narendra Modi alone, it means Nirantar Mehnat. Are the Congress leaders willing to do Nirantar Mehnat? The answer is no, they are not ready for Parishram. They only believe that they should occupy a space because of some legacy of 100 years ago and they are entitled. This sense of entitlement in the Congress party, even into the leaders of spokespersons of the Congress party when they represent themselves on TV. We have this This kind of mindset, the people of this country are no longer takers okay. of this. And thirdly, if I could sum up and Rahul, uh, Rajdeep always likes my alliteration. So I will just tell you what the what Congress needs is Vikas. What does Vikas mean? Vikas not the one that we have given in the four states where we won, but Vikas means V for vision, I for ideological clarity, K for karmatta, A for aspiration and anushasan, aspiration for the country, anushasan within the system, and S for system and a plan for samajik kalyan. All this Vikas is missing in the Congress party. I, I, it I is only Putramo. Seen... Not party mo, and they keep and pa Shazad, parivar above party. I'm this is the, the real big man. When it Congress comes to abbreviations suffering. and alliterations, Rajdeep, he seems to be learning from NM, the Narendra <laughs> Modi, not the Nirantar Mehnat. You know, I, I just wanted to make a point. I think there is some uh, truth in uh, what Shahzad says about the politics of entitlement. I don't think that there are Congress people who don't work hard. I reject that. I think I've seen enough politicians right down the line across parties who work hard. The problem is. When you're in the opposition, the nature of your politics has to be very different to being when you're in a party in power. The Congress for the most of the last seven decades has been a party or in power or believed that they are on, in, on the cusp of power. Even when they went out of power in 77, they knew that they could come back to power soon because under Indira Gandhi's leadership and Muraji Desai on the other side, they felt, you know, good times will return. The fact is, Narendra Modi is not Muraji Desai. And the present Gandhis are not Indira Gandhi. And India of the 21st century is not India of the 1970s. You know, half of this country is born after 1992. This is the post-liberalization generation and the BJP, like it or not, in its own way, some may, may, may see the darker side of it, some may see the brighter side, has captured the zeitgeist of this new India. Whether it is through Hindutva politics, whether it is by uh, through the imagery of uh, uh, Narendra Modi, whether it is cultural nationalism, whether it is, you know, there are various aspects to it, but they've captured that. Now, you have to provide an alternate narrative and work at that, which goes beyond anti-Modism. Okay. You have to build your blocks. You know, I was stunned two years ago when researching my book on the 2019 election. I was told there are 270 of the 720 districts, Rahul, in this country where the Congress's district organizations did not function. Now, that's improbable in today's India because you have to micromanage elections. The BJP, there are 10 lakh booths across the country. The BJP goes to those booth levels, has built this concept of Panna Pramukhs. The Congress can do it. None of this is rocket science. But you need to be willing to spend the hard yards. There are congressmen who, do, who have the capacity. Empower them. You know, this is not a one, you know, one. this won't happen in a year. But you've got to build towards that. Let me make a final point. And there I agree with Shahzad because let's, in the Vajpayee Advani era, the BJP lost election after election. But they stayed the course. 
and that's what you need to do in politics maidan mein raho and keep fighting in the belief that the wheel will turn not automatically but the wheel will turn if you work hard enough and convince people that you are credible enough otherwise people will look for alternatives today's young india will look for alternative they don't have time for the india of nehru and indira that's too when far back they want the india of today give them new ideas who knows they may embrace those ideas when you say keep fighting do add that keep fighting your opponents not keep fighting yourselves like the congress did in punjab to its great detriment sanjay jha and i just want to make this very clear so that there is no discomfort uh, for supriya sanjay jha is not here as a congress person at all he is here in his independent capacity uh, as somebody who's been part of the congress earlier but currently speaks not for the congress but speaks for himself so that should be absolutely clear sanjay what's your reading of what happened at the congress working committee meeting uh what what's your sense of what might happen next forget what I should happen uh but what's your sense of uh, what could potentially happen from here given that you're in touch with all the dramatis persona well rahul i think it was reminiscent of the movie groundhog day i mean the script was extremely predictable uh there are two points that i think we cannot ignore number one as rajdeep correctly pointed out the congress has been dwindling for a very long time if you look at uttar pradesh the last time the congress had double digit numbers was before 1996 it has around 9% in 1996 is down to 2% now the question that somebody needs to ask the congress party and i know supriya is an outstanding uh, spokesperson for the party but nobody can ignore this reality if you are in opposition for 30 years at the end of 30 years which means a minimum of six election cycles you're down to 2% that is a manifestation of not just terminal decline that's extinction i mean normally as an as a as a political party i would like to treat it as a maximum of five years in the wilderness i should be trying to come back in the next first opportunity this is devastation beyond imagination and i'm not taking away from the efforts of priyanka gandhi who i believe put up her best show no matter how adverse the headwinds were but the truth of the matter is it is in uttar pradesh west bengal telangana andhra pradesh you look at you look at the states like bihar if you add them up the congress has virtually zero seats without an alliance partner and roughly 265 seats of india in the lok sabha so you are not really a serious contender to get an absolute majority the last time the congress got an absolute majority was in 1984 so the truth is that the congress needs to understand it has been falling out of the radar screen for a long long time now let me answer your question you know there is this debate constantly going on and i have a lot of respect for priyanka and rahul because they joined the congress because of them but now let's call a spade a spade political brands have a shelf life then they dip and they can rise back again it's a possibility after all even donald trump aspires to be the next uh, president of america in the next elections but the truth is this that if after two lok sabha routs several assembly defeats 3 years later and 2 years before the next general elections you really don't have a congress president i think the public of india is basically telling the congress party if you can't fix your house in order are you really capable of running this country supriya is right when she says that many people said that we trust rahul's leadership xyz but that crowd is just 2 and 1/2% of uttar pradesh you don't even have the 10% vote share so as a congress support ideologically even practically i would say that if the congress can't see the writing on the wall you choose to wear blinkers or you blind yourself you are actually ensuring a very rapid decline and not just obsolescence i think the congress party will cease to exist and until you speak these harsh words i don't think the congress party will wake up at all rajdeep there's also the prashant kishore factor is that now a conversation that's buried in in the past Or is that a I conversation? I thought I represent the Congress That's... here, and I should be given a chance to speak. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. One speaker so... to the other. Okay. I think I deserve a chance to speak. Is, is given pra- I represent the Congress. Is Prashant here. Kishore still on the cards? I think it's only fair. I get a point of potentially as a strategist, uh, suppression it. No, I'm going to make a separate point because I think I represent the Congress here. The show is on the Congress. It's only fair I get a time to retort to all the three people and their statements made. 
I also want to put on record here because I am now in active politics. I've covered politics for a while. I think what has also happened in Indian politics is a huge change which we which we don't discuss. We shy away from discussing that change. It's a completely non-level playing field. You see the huge report from Al Jazeera today which tells you how a company posing to be a news organization was pushing everything for the BJP funded by one of India's largest industrial houses. Uh, Facebook turns a blind eye, so does the election commission. That's one part of the non-level playing field. The other part of the non-level playing field is that 98% of electoral bonds only go to one party, the BJP, and the combined opposition gets 2% of those electoral bonds. The third <coughs> is a very, very uh, are pliable institutions that are used to the advantage of the BJP, whether it's the ED, the income tax, or the CBI. And last but not the least, some sections of very pliable media. I mean... All of us have seen visuals of a Hindi news channel that breaks into a huge dancing song because the BJP has won. You're, a, you're the fourth pillar of democracy. Should you be celebrating the victory of one politi political party? We're not party celebrating alone? anyone's so victory let's not or defeat. Forget these factors, whether it's money, whether it's pliable institutions. <coughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a Hindi news channel, and we all know who I'm talking about. I'm, I, why should I glorify someone by naming it on a national TV like yours? But I'm just trying to tell you that the level playing field has been very distorted. Does Facebook have an answer to blocking 687 pages supporting the Congress and only one of the BJP? Do they have answers to how a religio supported seemingly news organization was pushing pro-BJP, fake news, anti-Congress content and nothing happened to that page? There are no answers. There are, there are reports that will come out but nobody is going to debate that. Nobody is going to answer those. So I am also saying, yes, the Congress, and I am the first person who will put up her hand and say, the Congress needs absolute surgery. There is no denying that. The, the time for palliative care is over. We need surgery. We need, we need very, very big actions. But please understand the, the, the ecosystem of politics that we are operating in. And let us not forget, we may glorify, and I, you know, I don't want to retort to Sanjay, he's a good friend, 2.3% vote share. There are 11 ministers in UP who lost their seats. 11 ministers. Let's not forget but what happened But that doesn't mean UP. anything. No Just one second. 11 ministers lost their, the lost their seats. But the BJP not, ended up at 273 plus. So how does it matter? It something. No, it, it does, ma'am. How do you mean it means ultimately something? Ultimately, it doesn't it matter something. which particular batsman scored runs or not. What matters yeah. is who won the match. You. One who won the match? That is far more. Loss, I mean, look at how many seats you won. Look at how many of your candidates the lost their own deposits. Well. You are raising questions about a party that won and broke 35 years of electoral history. No, I'm not. I'm not. I am not, Rahul. No. You are, you are twisting what I said. No, I am not raising questions on their victory. I have always said the victor takes it all, all questions. Okay, Ra Rajdeep, is, is, is the conversation with... There are 11 ministers who have lost... No, I, sure, it does, no, I, it doesn't I, matter I think beyond the point. No, no, Supriya, Supriya, Srinath is not, Supriya Srinath is not wrong when she says that there isn't a level playing field. We've seen it clearly with electoral bonds. We can see it but with... But Rajdeep, the it's not Just a minute. Oh, okay. No, so, so there is, you know, it is possible to suggest that it isn't a level playing field. I mean, I know... <laughs> Old timers will argue it wasn't a level playing field in the 1970s when Mrs. Gandhi, uh, when Indira Gandhi was sort of ruling supreme as well. So we can go back in history. My point is different. The fact is there are new energies emerging also. We saw with the AMRB party winning in Punjab. The AMRB party retaining power in Delhi. We've seen Mamta Banerjee win three elections in a row in Bengal. We've seen KCR win two elections in a row in Telangana. We've seen in Kerala, Mr. Vijayan beat back the Congress, even though there's a cycle of anti-incumbency in Goa itself. The BJP now is going into its third term in a mood of palpable anti-incumbency. People also look for smaller parties as potential alternatives. You see, you have to recognize that, as I said, this is a changing India with new forces. If you don't change, the voter is going to look at options who perhaps are far more attractive. I mean, are you, is the Congress seriously telling me that the Amadmi party has more resources than the Congress party? The fact is, the AMRB party had a plan, a strategy, worked at it over five years. They lost Punjab in 2017, but they came back stronger in 2022. Show me that in the Congress party. The Congress party, well, you know, in self-goal after self-goal in Punjab, self-destructive buttons being pressed one after the other. In Uttarakhand, the same political capital that Priyanka Gandhi Vadra invested in UP, if she'd put even a quarter of that, in, in Uttarakhand, it might have been more different. You put all your energies in a state where you were starting from a very low base, had very little chance, maybe for the she long term, maybe resilient, but Uttarakhand was a state where you had every chance to win. 
my point is i don't know who strategizes for the party you see you have to create a core team you have to build empower people only then can you take on the other side if an amad me party less than a decade ago start up can start spreading beyond delhi why can't the congress party wake up to the reality of a new india that's I, all i'm saying supriya is right it's not a level playing field but that cannot remain an excuse I for I, I your just, failure i just want to make the point that it's never a level playing field for anybody who's not in government whoever is in government has the instruments of government for good or for bad to ensure that the field is skewed it's Somewhat become much slightly. worse now let's be honest it's but, become but, much but, worse but the Rajdeep, bjp Rajdeep, has monopolized no, no, state no, no. power Rajdeep, in a Rajdeep, manner that we haven't Rajdeep, seen look at any the fact, other government barring indira gandhi in the 70s Rajdeep, Look That's at the, the fact reality. that the Aam Aadmi Party in Punjab was on, able Rahul. to win in the same non-level playing field in sure. Delhi. They were able to win, so it's Can never a level playing field. It's never ever a level playing field for the opposition. Up no, one, no, despite Rahul. it not no, being a level there. playing field, because they tried no, hard. They, Sanjay Jha wants to come in on this. If Up can go from Rahul. being nowhere to winning Delhi, retaining Delhi, sweeping Punjab. you can't oh, the problem cannot only be it's not a level playing field the problem is far deeper and the congress is refusing to acknowledge what's wrong with its own style of functioning rahul aap comes very quickly rahul, with less baggage that's the point you see you have to offer people a new credible alternative when you you see the aap doesn't you come with the baggage that party. today the congress comes you have to shed that Those baggage the congress and move ahead that baggage absolutely sanjay jha wants to make a point before i go across to shahzad punam can i please come in no one second rahul, you can't come in rahul, against you let the other speak sanjay Uh, rahul i tend to be uh, completely in agreement what you were saying let me tell my friend supriya the congress party has to win despite the headwinds this cannot be any convenient pretext here of institutional media captured by the bjp every party in government i completely agree does the same or it willy nilly happens the truth of the matter is it may have got aggravated under mr modi's government but that's the reality is the congress going to concede defeat because they believe that the system is working against it and that will be a tragedy for the grand old party you're going to win despite it mamta has shown it and so have other regional leaders by the way number 2 you know this whole conversation that without the gandhis the world will collapse and i say this with due respects to the gandhi family who've done a lot for the party in the past the political brand has now got eviscerated and therefore if you don't give somebody a chance you'll never know what the congress can be i remember i'll give you a corporate example rahul when steve jobs died in apple many people said the apple is going to crumble under tim cook it has become a formidable trillion that is bigger than the gdps of several countries put together transitions happen rajiv gandhi from a pilot became a prime minister and for the first two years he was perhaps the most outstanding one we had seen till unfortunately dark days took over and my third point very important strategically i think congress made a terrible mistake rajdeep is absolutely right i remember conveying it to some people i can't name them but doing 209 rallies in uttar pradesh i think was a disproportionate abuse of priyanka gandhi's time i always believe the congress should look at the low hanging fruits uttarakhand goa manipur don't ignore manipur either punjab focus on those two states if let's suppose 100 rallies were done spread between these three four places whether the congress was in government or not they would have definitely got more seats so there Shazad is an pura wala do you want to respond thinking. to the charges leveled by suppression day that you've captured institutions it's not a level playing field and therefore the congress's failures aren't just to do with the congress is also because you are not giving everyone an equal opportunity Well, you know, Rajdeep will like this couplet in 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 Urdu by Galib that Ta Umra Galib yehi galti karta raha Congress ki tarah dhool chare par thi Galib aur Congress aina saaf karta raha. You know, a bad carpenter always blames his tools. Here is my point. Forget the fact that level playing field is there or not there. These people will or do anything to save the parivar. It is a parivar bachao. They will blame institutions. I am just surprised they have not started abusing the people of Uttar Pradesh like they have done in the past. Like they have blamed people of Amethi for not being able to understand Rahul Gandhi, and therefore he uh, went to Vyanad. So you know this is a common excuse they make. But tell me one thing, Rajdeep and Rahul, you all have followed politics internationally also. The Labour Party also lost elections to the Conservatives to Margaret Thatcher for 17 years. 
that didn't mean they've started blaming institutions or the people of United Kingdom. They underwent changes within their party structure ideologically and structurally. They got a new leadership. The problem with the Congress party is that they are only governed by one Parivar's interest and therefore for them it is not party bachao, it is Parivar bachao. Let me give you one example. Supriya is a far more capable and articulate leader than most people in the Congress party. Why is it that Priyanka Vadra, who by the way entered the party, became a general secretary on day one. Supriya hasn't become general secretary. She's been made a spokesperson. She became general secretary on day one because of the Vadra surname. She lost one out of the two Lok Sabha seats in 2019, continued to get promotion and today she has taken the party down from 7 to 2 and from 6.5% vote share to 2.5% vote share and yet you will have Supriya saying that Priyanka did no wrong. Just like the crown can do no wrong, Priyanka did no wrong. Why shouldn't a Supriya Shrinet be general secretary in charge of Uttar Pradesh? Because it's Shrinet, it's not Gandhi Vadra. Okay, I'm out that's of time. The reason, that's the only reason why the Congress suffers and is declining. No, I need to come in. You can't be out of time without giving me a yes, word around. That's exactly I what I was about to, to say, that seconds. I'm out of time. You cannot be you can, out of time you without can let me a word uh, Priyank, let, You can you. let uh, Supriya respond to that point about Priyanka, but at least Priyanka tried and fought. Whether she won or lost is, you know, secondary, she fought. Uh, and that's the point. The Congress needs to be seen fighting and that's not happening often enough. Supriya, very quick, quickly conclude. Uh, he's trolling you in some senses saying you speak better than her. You could arguably be a better politician. Why can't you be general secretary? You really expect me to respond to two rupee trolls now making national television debuts? I'm sorry I got personal here, but you have no business maligning my leader uh, Rahul, the way I you think did. This kind I just of have one thing to say. I hope your deep-seated worry for the Congress. I'm sorry I'm talking Rahul, right now. I did not speak while you were talking. Your deep-seated worry party. about the Congress. Rahul, if I you think hope. this is the language is, that uh, is acceptable, Rahul, it shows Congress's culture. Are you going to let me speak or will you keep talking? This is absolutely unfair. Absolutely unfair. No, I was talking. I did not speak while no, he spoke. Supriya, you Supriya I'm, I'm out of time, so I need to wrap this up. Supriya, unfair. instead of getting into a tutu meme, make your point and no, wrap I this up because hope. I'm out of time. 30 seconds and then we close. I just hope, I just hope, I only hope and pray that the BJP is more worried about the unemployed, the price rise, the poor of this country than they are about us. Spend more time in governance. That's exactly what I want you to do. Don't worry about the we Congress. We are very we'll worried about those issues order, in Rajasthan, and we'll of give course, you a run madam. For your they money are number one like in Rajasthan. Unemployment Wait and, and watch. Price rise. That's all that I will tell you. Both of those issues are Aragas actually very is your middle name. You can go ahead and troll me because that's what two rupee okay. trolls are no, actually paid and, for. You know, for most people who are watching this, there would be a sense of deja vu that we've been there, we've heard this. It happens each time the Congress loses, they go around in circles and then they say, we can't do without the Gandhis and then nothing changes. If that's the way it stays, you know, we'll have Rajdeep back again after the next elections. He'll say the same thing. Sanjay will say the same things. The BJP rep, whoever it is, will say the same things. And Supriya or anybody else who steps in for her will say the same. You're caught in a rut. If you can't see it and if you can't shake yourself out of this, nothing will ever change and it's the and now with the Aam Admi party you've got an opposition party that is at least attempting to occupy the opposition space if this continues the trend line could be disastrous for the congress party as there's it a, has there's been. a french uh, word uh, rahul for it i think plula change plula shows mem the more things change the more they remain the same unfortunately at the moment that's the state of the congress and you can't really in politics remain static I think, you know, every political party goes through ups and downs, but you have to have the capacity to change and reinvent. So, P. Chidambaram is watching live. He'll be joining Rajdeep at 9 o'clock to talk about some of what we've discussed. So, do tune in to that News Today conversation.